Hello, welcome again to another video. This is going to be a science video and we're going to find out even more about the body, some things we have not discussed yet. My name is Marty Shaw and I'm a science teacher here at the Delphian School. This is my friend and associate, Sam. Hello, Marty was my science teacher, so <laughs> any difficulties we have, you can blame him. That's right. You will anyway. So this is, uh, we're going to talk more about the body. Here's the Heron book, All About the Body, which you can do, uh, download for free. That's the best price there is. And um, there's another booklet uh, we have called Anatomy and Physiology. Do we have that available for download, Sam? Uh, I don't think it is, um, but it's available at Heron Books. It's available at heronbooks.com. So, yeah. Anyway. It's available at Heron Books. Everything we have is available at 30% off so we can get it out cheap, but I don't think it's one of the free downloads we have. Okay, uh, so let's just clear something up. Uh, the, what is anatomy and physiology? Oh, by the way, if, you have, if you'd like to join in and have any questions, uh, hit the Q&A button or the Q&A box and type in your comment, question, or, uh, and we'll see if we can answer it. Um, so anatomy. Anatomy is the, the parts of the body. And, um, and so it tells you, you know, this is the, the arm, or this is the shoulder, or what this muscle is called. That's anatomy, what the different parts are and what they're called. Now, physiology has to do with what they do. Okay, so muscles. This muscle moves your arm up when you this is your bicep, this is your tricep back here, and they work together and they move you around. That's, that's the physiology part of it. That's what, what job does it do? What's its function? Okay, so we're going to talk about the eye today. This is actually only half the eye. You ever notice sometimes people call it the eyeball? You see why it's called the eyeball? Because it's in the shape of a ball. And these uh, red things you see on all four sides are the muscles that are attached to your eye. So you could be looking at straight, you can be looking straight ahead and your eye could go over to one side or the other side or up or down. And it can do that because these muscles will pull the eye and or these muscles will pull the eye this way or that way. And so that's how you're able to move around, uh, how your eye is able to move around even though you're looking straight ahead. And we're gonna talk about the different parts of the eye in just a minute. But first I'd like to talk about nearsighted and farsighted. How many of you out there wear glasses? I don't have my glasses on top of my head. Usually I keep my glasses on top of my head because I'm, I am nearsighted, which means I can see near, but when it's time to see far away, I need these glasses to see. So- Do you want so, that slide? Um, let's take a or look at the farsighted ahead. slide. That's this one. Okay, that's farsighted. So farsighted people can see things far away clearly, but they can't see close up well. That's kind of blurry. And you can see in this picture, the book is kind of blurry, but when somebody has the glasses in front, then they can read, read what uh, the, book, the, the book is saying. Uh, sometimes they're called reading glasses, but they're people for people who are farsighted. Now, what I do is I just have my glasses like this, so if I need to read something, I can read things close up, or if I need to see you. But if a student on the other side of the room asks, Marty, am I doing this right? Well, all I have to do is go like this, and then I can see what they're doing down there. So that's why I like to keep my glasses here ready for action. Pretty good, Marty. Uh, yeah. So this is what farsighted. Now, your mom or dad might be farsighted, so they'll have to wear glasses to read things close up, or if they have a vitamin bottle, or something like that, and they want to read it, they can't see it with their own eyes. They need to have assistance with the lenses that are in there. And we'll talk about exactly 
what those lenses do in a little bit. Let's just go to the next slide, Sam, where we have farsighted, right. uh, nearsighted. Hmm, let's see if I can get back there. There, we, there go. we go. So here's a picture, and I like this kind of picture because it sort of shows you what the glasses do. Now I'm uh, nearsighted, and so when I drive a car, I need to wear these glasses. Otherwise, the street signs, you know, this person is like almost blind, it seems, but I'm not that bad. But it's, things are a little fuzzy far, the farther they get from my, uh, from my eye. So I need to have these corrective lenses, and that's what these are. And these lenses have it so that when light comes through the eye here, it comes through the pupil, which is this opening in the eye. And then there's this lens over here and the lens bends the light and it's supposed to focus it on the very back of the eye. But sometimes the lens isn't right or, the, or as you get older, the lens changes shape a little bit or the eye might not be the optimum shape. Sam, do you have that other picture of nearsighted uh -huh. and farsighted? That's the one. So sometimes what happens is it'll just focus right here. The, the image will focus right there when it's supposed to focus on the back and then it'll be kind of blurry here. Or sometimes the image will focus right back here. Marty, I think people are having a little trouble seeing because we have it small. Okay. But maybe if I, if I go here, so. Well, let's take a look at the picture here Oops. and I'll, I'll describe it from the picture. So a normal eye, the light comes in and it goes through the lens. Now your eye has a lens in it, just like this lens. Oh, you're upside down. Do you see they're upside down, Sam? Yeah, look at that. You're upside down. I wonder if that comes across. I bet it does. But um, so what happens is if it's a, out of focus, I'm going to put it real close. Now you probably can't see much there because put it's making- Hold it there. You can see. I'll, I'll tell you. You can see Marty's shirt and you can see my face in the back. But a is your bit. face clear or blurry? Oh, it's very blurry. Okay, because what's happening is this lens is changing where the light is focused, where the image is focused. So here I can, you can still see us, but we're upside down. Or actually, you're upside down, we're right side up. But, um, so that's, what, that's what's happening here with the, uh, with the eye. Sometimes it'll focus here and that's nearsighted and people need to wear corrective lenses over the eye and that, what that does is it stretches the, the image out a little like in the picture here that you see on your screen. And so it focuses right back here. Now this back part of the eye is called the retina. I'm gonna pull up the big thing so they can see a little more easily. Okay. And then put it, let me get it right in there. Right in there. There you go. Now we also have a picture of the eye. You wanna bring up the picture? Yeah, I just took oh, it down. You, no, I mean this, there's this other picture. Okay, let me um, pull it back up. Which one do you want? Uh, not that one. How about this one? Uh, nope. That's not an eye. This, uh, there you go. One? So you can see here, there's this lens and the cornea refers to this clear area on top of the eye, sort of to protect it. And then the pupil is the hole in the eye that lets light through. If you didn't have a pupil, you couldn't see anything. And then there's the iris. The iris is the part of the eye that gives your eye a different color. Some people are brown eyed, mm. some people are green eyed, some are blue eyed. What color eyes do you have, Sam? I'm brown with a little green. Brown with a little green. Very attractive. <laughs> Thank you. <Mike>. <laughs> so <laughs> here is this cornea that is this little area on top of the eye protecting it. And then you have the hole, the pupil and the iris that gives you color. And then you have the lens. And the lens should focus the image right back here on the retina. 
if it focuses it over here, you need a corrective lens or glasses that spreads it out a little so that it winds up focused right back there on the retina. If you have, uh, if your people are nearsighted and they can't read things, excuse me, people are farsighted and they can't see things close up, then it's focused here. Well, that's not going to do, that's going to mean you're, what you're seeing is blurry. And so um, you need something that will, a lens in front of the eye that will start to uh, focus it so that the image is on the retina, the very back of the eye. Now the retina has different kinds of cells in it, um, which I don't think I have a, a video on. But uh, anyway, they're called, there are two types of cells. They're called rod cells and cone cells. And an easy way to remember what they do is the first letter of cone is of course C. So cone cells see color and the rod cells are just for seeing black and white. So if you're in a, a room that's dark or it's nighttime, it's mainly your cone, your uh, rod cells that you're depending on to see the different, uh, you, your way in the dark. But it's the cone cells that give you color vision. Good. We have some questions running in. Do you want to stop? Let's some jump in with some questions. Go? So Aubrey asked, why do different people have different colored pupils? Now, Boy, there's a trick in that. Well, we could talk about genetics. We could talk about, um, and that's Marty, I threw a trick at you and I got it past you. Go ahead. They don't have different colored pupils. Oh, pardon me. They have different colored irises. The iris is what gives the eye the color. I have, different colored, I have different colored pupils. I have, they're all in my science lab <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so funny. Do we know why? Yes. The reason is genetics. And what I mean by genetics is there might have been people that only had brown eyes once upon a time. And then there was a change in their genetic makeup. I don't know if you saw the video we had uh, on uh, the class we had on genetics. Genetics is such a fascinating field and it's a field, it has to do with why people look the way they do, what they inherit from their parents or grandparents uh, and what they give to their children, why their children look like them or might not look like them. And it's just a fascinating field. And it's, it's a field that's growing in science. People wanna know about genetic testing genetic testing for diseases. Some people are more likely to get certain diseases because of their genes. And all sorts of, we could have a whole nother class on this. Um, but anyway, there, sometimes there's a little change and instead of um, called a mutation, and that's when the genes don't quite duplicate the way they're supposed to. And that's what can give people different colored uh, irises. Perfect. And then Isis wanted to know, does eye color affect your eyesight? Eye color does not affect your eyesight. What affects your eyesight are the, uh, the lenses, the, or the one lens you have here in the eye, and the shape of the lens and the shape of the eye. So you could have an eye that's a little squishy, but if the lens, if it still focuses it in the back on the retina, then that's that's where you'll be able to see properly, okay? So um, this part back here is the optic nerve. And what happens is once that picture or once that light gets focused on the retina, that, that message then goes to your brain and your brain interprets that as what you're seeing. And just as I think we talked about this in a previous video. And just as this is turning things upside down, when it, the light goes through your eye, it turns it upside down on your retina, on the back of your eye. And then it, that image goes to your brain and luckily your brain flips it around the right way. So we see things the way they are, not upside down. Perfect. And then somebody asked, does our eye shape is that part of what affects the vision? And somebody else asked, 
could we explain the lens a little bit more? I thought maybe those two questions might go together. Sure. Well, the eye shape definitely would, would affect the vision. Um, and sometimes, as I said, if the eye is squished a little or a little longer, the lens isn't going to focus exactly on the very back part here, the retina, that it should be focused on. But uh, as long as if the eye's a little longer and the lens is a little different so that it focuses back there, then you'll see perfectly. If the eyeball is a perfect shape, but the lens is a little off, then it's not gonna focus back here where it should and it'll be a little blurry and you might need glasses. There's also a condition where the lens isn't perfectly smooth. There might be a little roughness in the lens. And so that could also lead to problems. It's not called nearsighted or farsighted. It, it has a special name and it's called an astigmatism. And what that means is you're seeing, instead of it being one image, you're seeing some things here and then there's a blank spot and some things up here. And so it makes it very confusing and hard to hard to see, hard to read things. So that can also be collect, corrected with the proper uh, glasses to, to uh, make up for that. Well, that leads right into the next questions. The questions are coming in. I love it. So we're here um, for you. Oops, I marked the wrong one. But somebody asked, can you correct eyesight that's not quite right. What are the ways you correct it if you have nearsightedness or farsightedness? Uh, well, there are a couple of ways that I can think of besides lenses or glasses um, that you can use. One is exercises. I've heard of people who do eye exercises. We have, you know, Priscilla? Mm -hmm. We have someone here working at the school who used to wear glasses, but she started doing eye exercises. I don't know exactly what kind of exercise she did. I'm sure her eyes were not able to lift weights or anything like that. Not that kind of exercise, but maybe stretching this way and that way or, or looking or doing different exercises with the eye that could change the shape of the lens. Interesting. And uh, another way that I know of is a laser surgery where they can go, uh, some doctors can go in and zap your eye, uh, zap your lens in your eye with a laser, and that will change the shape. So they have to really know what they're doing to get it, the changes, so that the, the changes will help you see clearly. Yeah, you know, I actually had that done. Did you? Yeah, I had the LASIK. It was amazing. They reshaped the lens in my eye, and I had to wear glasses before it, and when I left the... The doctor, I didn't have to wear glasses anymore. And wow. I never have had to again. That's cool. That's really neat. Really okay. neat technology. See, you knew that one. I did know that one. All right. A few people have asked about the pupil. It's this hole. Right. And they've asked about the size. Sometimes it's bigger. Sometimes it's smaller. Right. Well, what is that? You have this muscle around your eye, and this muscle can close your eye, close it down so there's only a little light coming through. So on a bright sunny day, or if you're at the beach and the light is reflecting off of the sand or off of the water, it's really bright. You don't wanna have your eye wide open and getting too much light. So your eye gets a little narrower. This muscle closes the pupil, the hole that you have, so that you're only getting enough light. You don't wanna, this is very sensitive in the the back part of your eye and you don't want to burn it out just that's why looking at the sun is not a good idea because it'll burn this out and then you won't be able to see well at all um, and uh, similarly when it gets dark out now this little opening has to get bigger and let as much light in as it can so that you can see because in a dark room if I were to hold up a color and it was, I mean, there's no light, like in a closet. If you went into a closet and you had a sheet of red paper and you looked at it, it would look black because black is an absence of light. And when it's so dark that we can't see, everything looks black. So I hope that answered your question. 
Good. Um, a lot of people, because I mentioned I had the laser surgery, are asking about that and if it hurt. It wasn't too bad. It was all okay. But talk to your parents if you want to talk about that. I don't want to talk too much about it because that would be something you should research with your parents. But I was okay. Thank you for all your concern. <laughs> it wasn't too bad and I'm all right. Great. And then uh, let me see if we had any more. Okay. So we've had several people ask. Ellie was the last one. She said, do animals see only in black and white? I've heard that some of them do. Um, for instance, I've heard bullfighters, you know, when the bullfighter's in the ring and he has his red cape and he's waving it, it's not so much the red cape. It could be polka dots or anything and the bull wouldn't know it. It's just the movement that attracts the, the bull. And I've heard some animals can only see black and white, but um, I'm not sure. That would be a good question to ask Google on the internet. Now, Hartley asked an interesting question. He said, the lens in the picture looks clear. And if we look at this lens, it's clear. It's clear. But our pupil, if our pupil is showing our lens, how come it always looks black? Oh, because you're looking at the back of the eye. Okay, so if you're looking at the black, there's not any light coming out from the, the back of your eye. And so you're, it's like you're looking into a dark room. There's nothing, it's dark. So um, just like when you look into a dark room or you look at uh, a dark, uh, something dark at night with no lights around, it's dark. And similarly, when you're looking through here, there's no light in here. Uh, especially if you're, if you're blocking, you know, you're blocking out a lot of the light. This is not a real reflective surface. This tends to absorb light coming in and send the information to the brain. It doesn't reflect it back out very well. Great. Um, so we keep going with questions? Sure. Or do you want to cover some more? Well, we could, I have this other model here. Okay. And this other model just shows you the different parts. And here's the cornea, and you can see the iris with a color, and you can see the pupil with a hole. And this is showing you the, the different oh, wow. muscles that will pull the eye. So you can look, your head could be looking straight ahead, but you could look to the right or the left or up or down because these are pulling the eye. So if I want to look that way, yes. that would pull it that way? So right, similarly, right huh. this is what these things are. Oh, it wow. just shows you, you know, you're looking and when your eye goes this way or your eye goes that way, it's these muscles pulling uh, and, and moving your eye around. That's cool. And then this is your, your bone, this is your eye socket. Um, called an orbital socket. Ooh, and you could even see this over here. This is a little tear duct. So when people cry or um, this is where the, the water is coming through or the liquid is coming through to, to keep your eye nice and wet. And then this yellow stuff, I don't know if you can see the yellow stuff over here. This yellow stuff is just fat to cushion your eye. And, uh, and this is bone to protect your eye. And of course, this is, this guy in the middle here is the optic nerve, the nerve that goes from the eye to the brain. Nice. Okay. Okay, several people have asked this one question. So I think yes. we should do it before we move on because it was on this picture. On this up. picture, yes. So they've asked, what is this right here, the macula? The macula. I'm going to pull that picture up on the screen again while Good. you describe it. So we already talked about the cornea. Are you? Have it? The cornea, which is the covering in front of your eye and the pupil and the iris and the lens. We've talked about those. And the retina, we've talked about that surface, which is all on the outs or the inside surface of your eye, but it's all around. The macula is the spot in the retina which is responsible for fine detail. So you can see things even better, even sharper in one area. And that's what the mac macula is. And then there's the this other part, I don't know, is it in the picture? No. But there's this jelly-like substance in here 
and that's um, that keeps that lets your eye keep the same shape, and that's called the vitreous. Um, and so that's this stuff in here. Otherwise, your eye might collapse or something like that. But it has this liquidy stuff called the vitrea. Perfect. And then Gayathri asked a question that several vitreous. people have asked. Yes. They're asking about the retina. Gayathri asked, is it some kind of eye disease? What, what is this retina? Oh, so the retina is just this lining here. Okay. Now, I think what you might be thinking of is sometimes the retina uh, can come loose from the back of the eye, especially in older people. And, um, and uh, then your eye's not gonna focus properly and it can give you headaches and this sort of thing. So I think that's what you're, you're thinking of, this retina, the back of your eye, which is supposed to get the image coming through the pupil, uh, through the lens, Onto the onto this back part of your eye called the retina. Sometimes this can break off or move a little bit, and not be totally on the back of the eye, and that could uh, that could be a problem. You might need to go and get an operation to get that stuck back where it's supposed to be. Nice, good. Well, let's see. We still have some time. Do you have some things you want to cover or do you want to do some more question and answer? Because I think some of the questions probably are going to be answered as we well, keep I was, moving forward. I was going to go on to other body parts and that sort of thing. Good. Let me pull up the last couple questions. Okay. Um, okay. This will be the last one we do so we can move on. But a few people have wanted to know what causes people to get blind. Might be a question we can't um, really fully answer, but well, we might be able to give a little There are probably a number of them, but probably the, the most common one, I'll show you in this one, is damage to the optic nerve. If this optic nerve gets damaged in some way or is not properly formed in some way, your eye can be working 100% and it, that image is focusing right back there and that information never gets to the brain. So I'd say that probably most of these problems with blindness is caused by damage to the optic nerve, the nerve that goes from the back of the eye into the brain. And it doesn't have far to go. It's very close, but still, if there's some damage to it, uh, that, could, that could lead to blindness. Wow, and Olivia looked it up and she says, only one animal has been confirmed to see black and white only, and it's a fish because it does not have a certain type of cell. Thanks, Olivia. Okay. Oh, that was Oliver. Excuse me, Oliver, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Oliver. Okay, well, now we're gonna leave the eye and we're gonna talk about other parts of the body. This is from More All About the Body uh, by Heron Books, heron.com. You can download this book for free. Um, you have, you have trillions and trillions of these little parts that make up your body and they're called cells. So how big is a trillion? Well, if you had, if you could count every second, okay, day and night, night and day, it would take you about almost 400,000 years to get a trillion. Wow. That's day and night, night and day, once every second. It would take you almost 400,000 years to get a trillion. You have trillions of cells in your body. That gives you an idea of how incredibly tiny they are. And uh, Sam, could you bring up, um, what am I gonna have you bring? Um, cells work together, do you have that one? Yeah, we should have Page the seven. Pack. Hey James, I think we forgot to pull the pack up. Can you come in and give us a little tech support? Hi, everyone. Here, I'm going to come on the other side. Okay. So we have a link to the pack, don't we? 
I just forget where it is. I can pull it up. Pardon Go me. For it. This is James. <laughs> Good. You can keep talking as I oh, Okay, yep. so here are these, I'll show you the picture in the book. Here are these cells you have. Remember we have, you have trillions of cells in your body and when cells, cells can come together to form things like tissues, the tissues, well, I'm not talking about the things you blow your nose or wipe your eyes with. I'm talking about a bunch of cells together. For instance, you could have muscle tissue. You could have a bunch of these muscle cells and these muscle cells come together to form muscle tissue. Like, Beautiful. what page do you want, Marty? Uh, seven. There you go. Page seven it is. I think you just, yeah, there you go. There's, thank you, James. So there's the cell, and then right below it are these bunch of cells. So sometimes the cells are roundish. Sometimes for muscle cells, they could be long and thin. You could have cells that are all, remember we talked about um, nerve cells. So you could have cells that are, you know, sort of like this shape, or you could have muscle cells, which are like long and thin. And here are other muscle cells next to it. Okay, and then there are cells like nerve cells, which might look like this. So you can have all different cells in your body and they're all different shapes and sizes depending on what their job is. And when you have a bunch of, so this could be a, a little bit of tissue because tissues are bunches of cells. And then we have lots of tissues together that could form an organ like the heart or the kidneys, or the liver, or things like that. So, cells work together to form muscles, or to form uh, organs, or to form a network of things. A system is a group of these things. It could be different types of cells together, like the circulatory system, which we discussed last week, could be could be time for me to wipe this down. Could be the heart. Okay. Oh, Marty, Your I'm pump. sorry. We have it on the screen here. I've been we answering have it on questions. The screen. Okay. So I wasn't actually paying attention to you, and nobody can see what you're doing. Oh, so good. Walk well, them through that again. Well, here's the heart. Well, we can have us, we'll talk about this. So the cell or bunches of cells together can be tissue like it said in your book, or you could have a bunch of tissues together, which could be a, a heart or a, a, uh, a gland, or a, the difference between an organ and a gland is a gland, that's a G for gland, produces some kind of liquid. Uh, so you have these glands, uh, there's the thyroid gland in your throat that helps your body grow, or you have a pituitary gland in your head that controls other glands, or anyway, the gland, that's what a gland does, but an organ is just, oh, for organ, is just a bunch of cells that do something like the, um, like the heart or the kidneys or something like that. Beautiful, I'm just starting to worry we're gonna run out of time, so. One of the things I want you to know is if you want to know more, this book is coming to your email and it's all downloadable and it has lots of information in it. So you can get it free there or if you need the actual book, you can always order it too. But anything that we don't cover here that you have questions that we can't get to, you can get out of here and I'll do my best to answer the questions as we go. But we're starting to run a little low on time. So okay, well, we how we might doing? run out. We have 10 <coughs> we, minutes left. Maybe. How are we doing on questions? Questions. So, we had a few questions. Some, a lot of people have asked us, <coughs> cells, do they make up tissue? Right, so that's, here's one, two, three, four cells that make up tissue. So that's what this is, cells making up tissue. 
and then tissues making up organs. And then, <clears throat> so you could have the circulatory system, which is the heart and the different tubes or vessels that go into the heart and out of the heart and the little capillaries, the thin little blood cell, uh, blood tubes that let uh, oxygen come out into the cells or have carbon dioxide come in to the, through the capillaries. We talked about that when we talked about the circulatory system. Great. And then, so a lot of people ask then, um, I'm trying to, join a bunch of questions together. So if we have like skin cells, if we lose skin, does the skin, do we get new skin cells? Do they get recreated? Well, there is this process. I mean, your body has grown since you were a baby. And the reason is there's this uh, process that your body undergoes just about every day where a cell, I don't know if you can see that, will copy itself like a little Xerox machine. And there's this process that gets bigger, it copies the genetic information that's in the cell, and then it splits up and you have two smaller cells which can then grow and it can grow into this larger cell again. Marty, a request from many of the viewers. Yes. Bigger. Make them bigger. They're having some trouble seeing. Okay, here we go. Cell. No, that didn't do it. Let's try a different color. There. Cell. There we go. And so the cell will break up. It'll copy its genetic material. And now we have two smaller cells, which will grow and become the same size. And then do the same thing. It'll break up also. And so that's how your body, if you get a cut or if your body is growing bigger, like your hair is growing, your fingernails are growing, uh, all of this happens through this process, normal process, where the cell grows and then splits, and it's called mitosis. It's like my toe, okay? Your toe, not your big toe, it's mitosis. And so this is a normal process that cells go through, and maybe we'll have a video on this. We might have a video on cell division and cell growth. And this is what happens to cells. So that's why if you get a cut in your cell or if your body needs more cells because you're growing or you're exercising, you're building up muscles. Well, how do you build up muscles? Well, you have these muscle cells which duplicate and that's how you get bigger muscles or bigger whatever or repair of cells. Nice. Okay. We have like five more questions that are all related to this. Okay. Let's go. So I wasn't totally paying attention because I was trying to follow this. That's you okay. might have answered this. Somebody asked what are cells made of? Did we answer that already? No, we did not. Okay, great. Let's start with that one then. Well, cells are made of this stuff called protoplasm. And protoplasm, if this is a cell, Everything inside the cell is called protoplasm. And so that's just the name. It means uh, it's the living substance. It's, the cells are living things. They need food. They need oxygen. They need to get rid of their wastes. And um, because they're living. And so you have the cells which are made up of protoplasm. Now in the cell, there's this sort of like a brain of the cell called the nucleus. That's where all your genetic information is kept. So that's why Sam has brown hair and Sam has brown eyes, green brown, green brown, and very nice indeed. Thank and you, um, Thank you. 
And that's, he has body uh, information in his nucleus that tells him, it tell his bot, tells his body what to grow, what kind of color hair he should have. Is it straight or is it curly? What color skin he should have, uh, that sort of thing. So all of that is kept in the nucleus. Then you have these little parts in the cell called organelles, sort of like little organs that do lots of different things. There's the uh, mitochondria. We should probably have a, a video with this. Mitochondria, the different parts of the, as a part of the cell which creates energy. So your muscles can move and that sort of thing because of uh, these, the mitochondria in the cell. Good. I'm going to interrupt a bit because I think if we keep going down this line, where there's a whole courses on. There are whole going, courses on this. And it's, it's going to get pretty deep. But maybe we we'll can, do this next week. Yeah, that'd be great. But we can hit a few more things with the time we have left, which people are asking what's protoplasm made of. And I think a simple answer could be everything is made out of atoms and molecules. Right. And those end up being protoplasm and cells. Right. But somebody said something really smart that. Um, I think is a really great bit of data. Let me see if I can find it so I can give credit to the right person. So Ellie, she wanted to point out that tissues are made of cells. Right, right. right. And so you have cells, they make the tissues. Right. And then the tissues make the organs. Right. And there's a stable piece of information that we could think with. So we go from organs to tissues, tissues to cells. And right. those are made up of... Those are made Smaller up of protoplasm, bits. which is made up of atoms. So if we take some body parts that we have, like our skin is a tissue. Is that right? Or our skin is an organ? Skin, the whole skin is an organ. Part of it would be a tissue. Okay. So if you're talking about your, all of your skin, then that's an organ. Or all of your heart, that would be an organ. But if you just have some heart, a bunch of heart cells, that could be tissue. We could take the eye that we've explored kind of deeply. So the eye would be an organ, is that right? Yeah. And the different parts of the eye, like the lens, would be made of lens tissue. Right. And the lens tissue would be made of cells. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. Or the retina would right. be a tissue. It would be right? a tissue and it would be made up of cells. And it's part of the eye, which is an organ. Right. Now, these cells are all different. They all have different jobs and so they're all different. Uh, they have, just as your, your skin is different from your bone, so these different parts of the eye are different. They have different jobs, and they're built differently for these different jobs. Good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, this, we have different parts, different kinds of systems in our body, like this is the circular is the muscular system and of course the muscular system has the muscles in it there's a picture on the go ahead to draw there's a there's a the muscles muscular system has to do with muscles in your body that are attached to bone and so when this muscle shortens up that's why when you make a muscle here and you can this gets bigger it's because it's pulling this together and pulling that back. And then when you do that, this is your bicep. There's another muscle under it. There's a picture of all of this stuff right here in your All About the Body book. Uh, here we go. They talk about the muscles and the biceps. And ooh, it even shows you here how the muscle is attached to the bone, okay? And that's what helps you move your body. So that's all in All About the Body. There's lots more stuff here. We've done a few videos on it, but maybe we'll do another one okay. on, uh, on, the, uh, on the cells. Great, well, we're pretty much out of time, but I had a realization just now that we'll share and we'll see if I'm right. Okay. So the cells are the smallest little bits of living Things. that you have trillions of they make the tissue yes that's correct so they make the lens the cells make up the lens yes and then all the tissues together make up an organ so right it's like the eye 
And then you end up with a system like the eyes and the muscles, both eyes and all the and the, nice. uh, and the nerve that goes, yeah. So cells make tissue, tissues make organs, organs make systems. And I guess systems, you could say, make a body. Right. You have lots of systems in your body, whether it's the circulatory system that circulates blood, the skeletal system that keeps your body oh, bones. in bones, uh, the, the um, digestive system that takes food in and, and changes it so your body can use it. Lots of different systems make up your body. Great. Okay, it's commercial time. Ready? Ready. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us again, and I hope you learned something and had fun. I hope you can download this free book if you're interested and find out you'll have your very own copy all about the body, or you could, uh, if you want this nice uh, fancy book with, uh, with all the pictures and such, you could uh, download that at uh, you could buy that at heron.com. There's a, uh, I think on your, uh, there's something attached to this um, video that tells you you can get 30% off for all books you want. Uh, so I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. And remember, the cure for curiosity, the cure for boredom is curiosity. So stay curious about how your body works and how the world works and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Bye for now. Yeah, so that was good.